So I'd like to offer something. Um, another principle in anti-Semitic education is something called pendiculation. You might have heard me talk about this before. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, but if you've ever been to a zoo or you have pets, cats, dogs, you notice how animals tend to like, like stretch something out, you know, and release. You know, the cats get up and they're like this. Have you have you seen all animals? All animals do this. So it's a major principle in somatics because what we're going to do is. I'm going to be asking you in a moment, and don't try it right now, is to engage, contract a muscle, and my top hand is going to apply pressure to meet the strength of my lower leg. And then my leg is going to give in as my arm slowly presses the knee down, and then I'm going to relax. So if I wasn't this flexible, and this is where my knee was originally, I'm not going to try to push this into a stretch. So you want to let go when you feel like you're at the end before you go into the stretch. Okay, and that's partly how this works is we're all pendiculating. Um, what's that? <laughs> it sounds naughty. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I guess there is a branch of yoga called Tantra. Um, I haven't specialized that, in that yet, but um, maybe we can talk later. Yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Justine and her, her partner, her husband, have bought some property in Hawaii, and they're, they're, they have some big plans, so maybe one day we could do a tantra pendiculation yeah. yoga class. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In the rainforest. In the rainforest, yeah, it's a gorgeous I, know, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> All right, so you guys, how about, um, let's just practice with this first so we can get comfortable. So as best you can, can everybody see me? Feel free to move over if you want um, some more room. So this is great because your hips are pretty tight. Okay, so always know your, um, your own limits. So first start by lifting your knees and feel free to bring your feet out if this is too much. So it's up to you guys, okay? Bring your knees up and make contact with your, the top of your hands. Can you build some energy? Can you feel how there's a little bit of resistance? Your arms or your legs aren't winning. Now slowly push down. Let the strength of your arms win. Make it smooth. Some of you are holding your breath. Ah, before it goes into a stretch, let it go. And also relax the shoulders. Okay, a lot of you are already flexible, okay? Let's try it again. Pressing up, squeeze the inner thigh. Slowly let go. Pause, pause, and then keep going down. Relax the shoulders. How's that, Marjorie? Not bad. Okay, let's try it again. So you're pressing on the inside of the knees. Ah. Pause. And then coming down. And let it go. Okay. I should have had you, had you guys check before and after. Dang it. It's always good for the brain to learn by contrast. Okay, let's, let's, do, um, let's switch the legs whatever leg was in front, if one was, the switch. Maybe we can still check in. Notice what your range of movement is. Some of you are pretty flat already. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna watch you. I'm gonna see if you make a difference. I'm gonna see if it makes a difference. Okay, ready? So lifting up, close your eyes. Close your eyes and feel which muscles are engaging. Slowly let go. It's just a couple of pound, pounds of pressure. It's not struggling. It's not this issue of strength, now let it all go. And relax your shoulders, Joanne. Thank you. All right, let's do it again. one that we could do that most people have a challenge with. Um, bring your feet together. An option is to continue sitting on a bolster or a blanket, but if, if you're comfortable on without, that's, that's fine too. All right, so how much space is between your knee and, and the ground? Just kind of check that out. A lot. Okay, let's see if we can reverse that. So now the elbows are coming to the knees. 
hands around the ankles, lift the knees, press the elbows into the knees, notice where you feel it, close your eyes, and then slowly come out, soften, and just visualize those muscles lengthening and opening. You know what, I'm inspired to change the instructions up a little bit. Let's come forward into a bend as well, because I think we're gonna find a difference in this as well. So let's just do the before and after. Let's do the before. We do the movement, just check it out. And then come up. Let's try it again, but this time we're gonna add a forward bend. So bring the elbows into the knees, the knees into the elbows. Slowly open coming forward and lead with the heart coming forward. See if you can flatten your lower back slightly. The neck is long. Remember not to go into a stretch. Try to resist not going into a stretch. Come up again. It's almost like butterfly wings pressing up and into the elbows. Engage the inner thigh and slowly open as you come forward. The very end, let it all go. Neck relaxes, shoulder relaxes, inner groin relaxes. Last time, coming up, sitting tall. Just enough pressure so there's enough feedback, but we're not struggling in this. Just enough, slowly let go and open. Leaning forward with the heart. Try to lengthen your lower back. Neck is nice and long as well. And now let go completely and notice if you have any more range of motion. Come up slowly. Anybody notice a difference? <coughs> you guys notice a difference? A little bit? Okay, bring the legs out, shake it out. opening the muscles surrounding the bones, yeah, creating more length. All right, this is a somatic hip opener. Bring your right knee forward and your left foot behind. Right knee forward, left foot behind. Right hand is resting on the floor. We're gonna continue opening this whole area, okay? Um, bring your right knee up and just notice how high you can bring it without struggling. We'll see if that changes. Can we bring it back down? Place your left hand on top of the right knee. And then just meet it with a couple of pounds of pressure so that you can just hold it there. And now slowly come down. You can close your eyes. Relax every other muscle that you're not using in this movement. And let's try it again. Top leg is at a slightly different angle. Okay, lifting up and squeezing. And slowly opening. My Good. arm shakes. Your arm shakes? Which one? The, the one that's raising on the Oh, so it might be a little fatigued. Oh. So an option to do um, with the right hand is tripod fingertips or make a fist. Straight down, yeah, see if that makes a difference. It's up to you. Okay. okay? Bring that foot back in. Notice if you can lift your leg any higher. Yes. I like to see that you have, yeah. Have you noticed that, more range of movement? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool, okay. Let's do the back leg. So left hand on left knee. Let's try lifting the left knee by itself to see what happens. This is kind of an experiment. This is a new movement for me that I'm learning to teach. Earhart's helped me with this a little bit. So let's try it now, pendiculating left, left leg. Can you feel the outside from the hip, the IT band, the TFL? Yeah. Great for the TFL. A yeah. lot of people have tight TFL muscle. Uh, TFL muscle, yeah, yeah, IT band, TFL muscle. It's a, actually a very short muscle, a little muscle, and a big ligament. Fascia. Fascia, yeah. Okay, try it again. pressure in both directions. So you first, 
you first lift it up and just meet equal to equal. And then you release the leg as you come down. Yeah. You want to change the angle of that back ankle? In fact, if you flex the left ankle, it helps protect the knee a little bit. Left ankle is flexed. Try it one more time. Yeah. If you felt my TFL, it's like a rock. So this is something I really need to keep doing more of. Let it all go. Remember when you touch the floor, then everything releases. You want to bring that ankle back in and just notice if you can lift your leg up higher. Can you? Yeah, definitely. A little more efficient? Yeah. When the muscles are tight and tense, it's not efficient. We don't have the energy, the strength of the muscle. So actually, by doing these movements, not only are we increasing our range of motion, but we're bringing strength, the, uh, the choice of strength back to the muscle. OK, now from the ankle to the knee, lifting uh, two fingertips, pressing on top of the heel, big toe on the ground, meet the pressure so that there's equal strength, and then let that arm or the fingers win as the heel comes down towards the floor. So make it as slow and smooth as you can. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I see a little bit of jerkiness. That's evidence of the sensory motor amnesia and that's exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for these little chattery places. I have to investigate this further with some of my friends that are chiropractors and PTs, but I'm guessing this is probably pretty good for the attachments to the knee. It's funny, last month I got a little scared because my knee started to hurt, uh -huh. but it felt awesome afterwards. Afterwards, yeah. Just during the doing of it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm think, yeah if you fe that. use the feathering technique, you know, and, and just meet that place and move out yeah. of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Let's do the other side, you guys. Good job. Oh, you're not done? You have to check, don't you? Oh, you oh yeah, did you check it? I, d I don't know if I asked you to do it before, but, but I, I definitely have more range of motion. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Oh, yeah. Isn't this fun? <sighs> I've been told that uh, Thomas Hanna and Moshe Feldenkrais, this tradition comes from Mosh Moshe Feldenkrais, um, that they would watch the movement of babies and animals <coughs> to come up with these. So, all right, should we check the front leg? Let's just check our range of motion. Right hand on top of the left knee. So first, just lift the knee, and then meet it with the top hand, and just keep it there for a moment. And then give in with the leg, slowly and smoothly. And again, with your left hand, if, if your wrist is bothering you, you can come up on tripod, or make a fist, or take a break. So let's try it again. Close your eyes and notice where you feel it. If you, if you feel, if you have moments of where there's, for lack of better words, chatter, where the muscle's kind of skipping, then that's, just stop there and see what you can do. Maybe, maybe take the pressure off a little bit and just see what you can do to smooth it out. After this uh, next one, I'm not trying to rush you, but everybody's at their own pace. Change the direction of the top foot. Bring it forward slightly. Again, to protect the knee, you can always flex the ankle, the left ankle. back in and just notice if you have more range. It's like lubricating with WD-40 yeah. or something, right? <laughs> yeah. It doesn't squeak anymore. It doesn't squeak as much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do the, let's do the, uh, the right knee. Notice what your range of motion is. Now you can cheat, right, by leaning back. So try not to cheat. Just keep 
keep your body upright and notice who is saying that they had knee challenges? How's it going? Doing okay? Okay. So really keep your ankle flexed. That will help, okay? Yeah. Okay, let's um, then place the right hand on top of the right knee. Hold it there, close your eyes, and with your awareness, tune in what muscles are you retraining right now? Some of us don't have a lot of awareness with our lower half of our body. So this is great to train ourselves to pay attention. And there's so many muscles that you attach in different places. I was amazed when I really started studying. Um, for this movement, I was studying my anatomy again. I thought, wow, there are so many muscles wrapping into the pelvis and down to the knee and attaching all over the femur. Yeah. yeah. And then change the angle of the back foot. Remember, you don't need to apply a lot of pressure. It's just enough. What we're doing is we're, we're giving a little bit extra feedback to the brain to help us learn how to control the muscles that have been out of control. How's it going? Okay, awesome. Great. So remember the feathering. Like, don't overdo it. You know, just be like, oh yeah, and then back off. All right. Um, bring the heel back in. Let's check it out just for the sake of time. I could play with you guys all day. I don't know where the time has gone today. It's just, do you have more range of movement? Mm -hmm. I really noticed it with this one. All right, let's do the heel. So um, top two fingers. Oh, wait, should we check to see how much we can lift the ankle? So big toe on the floor, just lift the uh, heel. And then top two fingers, apply some pressure on the top of the heel, slowly come down. Has anybody been stung by a stingray? Yes. I couldn't believe it, it's like a puncture wound. Mm -hmm. You put it in hot water. Hot water, yeah, for two hours, but I looked down and I know that sounds gross, but I was squirting blood. It was just like projectile. I'm like, oh my gosh. I still have something in my throat. You still have? Yeah, well, it's a bone. It's like a bone with jagged teeth. So it goes in my puncture. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> but I'm touching my the part that was punctured, so I'm feeling a little sad for myself. It's okay. Thank you. I'm, I live. I live. Tell the story. Yeah. Let's do one more. It's it's the toxins of the sting that really I was like that was the most curious part was the waves of pain that was trippy. Is it poisonous? It's toxic. Yeah. You wait to see if you hope, hopefully you don't have an allergic reaction. I didn't. Oh. Okay. Should we check it out? Do you guys have any more range of motion? Okay. So this is kind of fine tuning, you know, just the areas of the TFL and the quadricep, the abductors, the adductors. Um, I'm only gonna be able to do one more with you guys, but again, this is one of my favorite ones and it's the lighthouse. So um, please bring your, we're gonna be a little more open now to do this one. So bring the right knee forward and the left foot back. If you guys choose to come next month for our Sunday Sanctuary, I'm going to continue evolving with this. There's, I probably didn't get to half the things I wanted to share, so hopefully you can make it again. Um, and thanks for playing with me today. All right, so this is so cool because you really get to see how tight your back muscles are, even though we've been working all day today. Is Just place your right hand on the floor, bring your belly button in, and turn to the right and pick a spot on the floor or the wall that will mark your range of motion before we do the movement. Remember that spot, come back to center, place your left hand on the right shoulder, and then start twisting left and right very slowly. So the left hand on the right shoulder is not gripping, it's just there to basically get the arm out of the way, and the elbow's resting on the chest. So try not to hold any tension in your shoulders, in other words. And as you turn to the right, let that lift, invite that left hip to roll forward. 
So not only is this good for the hips and the abductors, the adductors, um, it's also repatterning all the muscles surrounding the spine. Actually, we're even going to affect the eyes, the muscles of the eye. So explore your range of movement. Another tip in this movement is when you twist um, to the left, it's not as enjoyable. You kind of stop sooner than when you twist to the right. But squeeze that left shoulder blade back behind you a little bit. See if you can get a little bit more room. So you're exploring your range of motion. Okay, so we're going to keep twisting to the left and the right, but now the head is going to go the opposite direction. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> One eye in each direction. <laughs> Earhart's done this too many times with me. <laughs> All right, so do the best you can so your head is crisscrossing over your chest as you twist the opposite direction. Keep exploring your range. There's four parts to this movement. So this is the second part. Now, the third part is bring your finger. Next time you are over to the left side, place your left hand back on the right, or, uh, the right hand on top of the left shoulder. So everybody twist to the left, and then reach with the elbow and the chin towards the ceiling, arch your back, and then round the shoulder, chin to chest, Belly comes in. You can hear a nap coming on. <laughs> Good, you guys. Looks awesome. Nice and slow and smooth. Feel from the inside out. What muscles are you using? Eyes go the opposite direction. Remember to try to keep your twist to the left. Try not to unwind in the twist. Keep it fully twisted to the left. motion. Feel that right hip rolling forward. To me, that feels so good. Opens up a little bit of the psoas, which is hard to reach sometimes. your next repetition, you can release the right hand and look over your left shoulder. Did you find some space? Yes. yes. So, do you guys understand it? Have I sufficiently explained how this is working? Is a bunch muscle creates a lack of range of motion. A long muscle creates more range of motion. So, does everybody have time to do Shavasana? Because we're... Okay. Are you kidding? I don't have to beg you. All right. So find your favorite position. Relax. Boy. So make yourself comfortable. Congratulate yourself for taking the time to do something new and different. Relaxing your jaw, relaxing your eyes, relaxing your tongue. Ah. Let all of the instructions go.
experience your essence expressing through being in this moment. be quiet for a little while but I encourage you to take advantage of this time for deep conscious rest this is the most powerful time of class where we can release our personality and allow ourselves our spirit to inhabit our physical body without any effort so enjoy riding the waves of your breath let go ground close to the earth and be free. <laughs> 